Welcome to Shorty Supercoach and today we're going to take a look at Robert Murphy in another Supercoach player profile. Now of course in these I take a look at the pros and cons of each player and then dish out a bit of a verdict for our Supercoach sides in 2017. I work my way through from the top 30 to 35 most popular players all the way to number one. Now of course there are a few adjustments and Robert Murphy is one. There have been a couple of requests for him and originally I did have Dane Beams in this position but I suppose since then he's really drifted his knee injury has made him a little less relevant I may revisit that if he does play a few JLT community series games but for the moment Rob Murphy seems to be conducting a bit of uh, interest so I thought I would take a look at him now firstly he is priced quite nicely hence the interest $392,000 you'll have to pay at the moment he is in 16.1% of sides at number 40 on the popularity list and it is a bit surprising I must say that he has been in that many sides but we'll start off with the pros of course he is the fairy tale in a way of grand final day it was shocking that he missed out on the premiership for the dogs since he really is a heart and soul player but of course Luke Beveridge giving his medal to him was a moment we'll remember for a long long time and one of the most amazing final series we'll ever see and that was a fitting moment but of course Murphy after three games last year where he did produced some fantastic scores, did his ACL in dying moments against the Hawks. Now, that average of 103, I don't feel we can look too deeply into his three games of 112, 102 and 95 was certainly a fantastic start to the season. Now, he does play quite a super coach friendly role, rebounding off the half back line. And we do know that he's a great user of the ball, particularly when the Dogs were struggling as a side. He was one man who went back just to give them some leadership and assurity off the half-back line and good ball use. Since then, you know, there's been a lot of growth in the side, as we saw throughout the back end of last year. And I guess they, thr uh, they thrived without him in a way, showed that they weren't reliant on him, but he is a fantastic player of their back six. Moving on to the negative side of things and maybe what you might need to be concerned about and why I've been a little bit surprised is he is a 35 year old man nearly coming off a knee reconstruction. Amazing that he's conducted so much interest but nonetheless why should be a little bit concerned well I'll work our way through his seasons 2005 when he first really came on the scene averaging 89.6 he was a forward back in the day but working our way through some highlights 2008 92.7 then a couple in the 60s and 70s 2011 89.8 84.7 career high in 2013 99.1 88.5, 91.8 in 2015 and of course at 103 last year now the reason I read out those numbers is he has never really been super coach relevant. More often than not, he has floated between your low 80s to low 90s, with the outlier being 2013, where he produced 99.1. And I feel as we look back on his career, whenever he does retire, that that will be his career best season. The main cause for concern is that he is 35, coming off a knee, Surely we can't be relying on him to produce as consistent scores week in, week out. I know that's a bit of a, a negative thought process on a guy that everyone loves. We all love Bob Murphy, that's for sure. But I'll give you my verdict, and it's a straight up no. In no way, shape or form will I be considering Robert Murphy. I have been a little bit shocked that a bloke who's nearly celebrating 35 years on the earth coming off a knee reconstruction is conducting such an amount of interest considering he's never really set the world on fire in supercoach i just think also the fact that johannesson is going to really step up he was a real shining light last year when he wasn't injured of course he suffered a few injuries as well but i think you've got biggs back there as well matty boyd what role does he play certainly murphy will play plenty of games he'll be managed as well so worth noting also but I just feel that we're 
probably see an average in the late 80s, maybe early 90s. I don't feel like that's good enough. I think probably your best case scenario would be early 90s and worst case is definitely him floating back to around 80 odd because I think that's definitely possible. He'll probably take a bit more of a backward step in his involvement on actual stats and more so of a leadership role out on the ground. You often see in the twilight of good players careers that they have great influence on the game but it's not necessarily on the stat sheet. I feel like Johannesson's probably the man who'll rack up more of the ball and give a bit more rebound where Murphy might be more of your uh, general in defence and not always the go-to guy to rebound from the back line. Um, I suppose if you're picking him, he's a bit of a stepping stone to a premium, but it's a little bit pricey for mine as well. I mean, 390, it's not dirt cheap, um, and don't get sucked into his average of 103 last year. Yes, he started the year well, but he's done that in previous years, and over the course of the season, time and time and time again, we've seen that his general scoring is between 80-odd and 90-odd. So I think we can't take a three-game sample size as a 22-game sample size. Don't feel like... He's a 100 scorer off just three games because history shows that that just won't happen. And history will also show that at that age, you're really not going to improve. History will also go to show that coming off a knee, you're generally going to have a bit of a delay in finding your best form. So I feel like Murphy will play a solid role for the Dogs in their premiership defence, but I do not feel like he'll play a good role in your super coach side. So... Been a little bit harsh there on Bob Murphy, don't get me wrong, I do love the man, he's a fantastic fella, love watching him on AFL 360, absolutely love what he's doing with the dogs and how well he's taken what would have been a heartbreaking moment to miss out on the premiership, but I just don't think we should be sucked into the fairy tale of Bob Murphy and sucked into a couple of inflated numbers and go picking him as a mid-price option in our back line. I think there's better options if you want to go mid-price, and I think there's also some reasonable options in our premium stakes for our defenders, which I feel is probably money better spent. So, that's about all. Give me your thoughts on Murphy. I know there are a couple of guys who requested him, so feel free to uh, give me your thoughts on that matter. Of course, like the video, subscribe as always. Hopefully we can work our way to 600 now. We've ticked off the 500. If you've recently come on board, thank you very much. Hopefully 600 isn't far away. And next up in the player profiles, I'll take a look at a man who conducts a lot of debate about his selection. Hasn't quite fitted into his new club overly well. Didn't play any footy last season is a dual position player and could make or break your side depending on how he does fit into that attack. So we'll have to wait and see where his role truly is. I'll be back with another player profile in a couple of days. Thanks for tuning in, guys.